includes a trip into space for school teacher Krista McCollum. Monday's attempt was scrubbed by trouble with a door handle. Steve Delaney is at Cape Canaveral this morning. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Bob. It is cold here. It is Long John weather at the Cape. NASA has had launches in sub-freezing weather before, but never from the shuttle program. And there is some concern about the effect of these cold temperatures. Primarily, they're looking at a buildup of ice on the outside of the external fuel tank, which is loaded with hydrogen and oxygen at very low temperatures. Meanwhile, the crew is going through the routine of having breakfast just before they take them out to the pad. This will be the second countdown for what's going to be known as the teacher flight because it will feature lessons to be taught a little bit later by Krista McAuliffe, the school teacher from New Hampshire. And this is a, a departure for NASA because this will be the first time that a real person, if you'll pardon me, will be allowed to participate in one of these flights and it portends more of availability of flights for common ordinary citizens and it kind of demystifies and takes some of the mystique away from the old astronaut tradition. So a lot of people around the country are going to be watching this one if it gets off today as they sincerely hope it does because the longer they delay it the more they throw the whole schedule for the year off and it's already a bit behind. Bob? Steve, thank you. It's 707. Jane? And thank you, Bob, and it's good to see you again. We haven't and uh, I haven't had a chance to ask how Antarctica was. I'm not sure I have the superlatives to describe it, but we have, have brought back some tape, which you'll be seeing beginning next week. Oh, really? New Orleans was nice, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bob. If he wants to relive his past in that article, all he's got to do is go out to Fifth Avenue right now. Yeah, it's chilly. It's part of it. Yeah, i got to say, what a beautiful time again, the people of New Orleans. If New it, Orleans is a wonderful If it place. flew, crawled, walked, or swam, we ate it. There was nothing we missed down there. I've always wanted to do this in the weather business for 35 years, and I can do it this morning and give you some facts behind it. This morning it is Tupelo in Tupelo, Mississippi. No, you're making that. No. Winds, good morning, gentlemen. Yeah. I like to see these guys fight. Give me along in a minute. That's right, Tupelo, Mississippi. The wind chill is two below this morning. It is cold outside. We've got a little better news in the latest update from our cracked weather team upstairs. Citrus Belt was hit, no question about it, but 26 degrees was the official low in Orlando, and that's about the heart of the Citrus Belt. South of there, everything was in better shape. They got the word out, and the warning was okay, so that I think most people could protect themselves. However, north of Orlando, there could have been a little bit of a problem. Uh, hopefully, the, everything will work out okay. Love those oranges and tangelos. Out west, it is best this morning. Los Angeles record 87 yesterday. Phoenix 81. Billings, Montana. What is this? Billings was 60. Rapid City, South Dakota, 65. Almost a repeat performance again today. Jet stream fools you out there in California and the western states, but that's the place to go to get warm. It was cool in Florida this morning. It did not get down below 30 degrees. We thought it might. It, uh, Miami International Airport did get down, I believe, to 39 degrees this morning. Wind chill factor there was about 20. That's still cooling up. It is cold. We have biggest problem here in the northeast this morning is blowing and drifting and the wind chill. It is bitter cold. We have blowing and drifting snow. They had four to six inches of that snow and they're icy roads so be very careful. Maine will get some more snow today, four to six additional inches, but all throughout New England, the Ohio Valley, all the way down through the mid-Atlantic states, look out if you're traveling by car, especially you're going to have some uh, rough roads just because of icy conditions. Another Alberta clipper zipping into the nation's midsection, bringing more cold weather as the week uh, winds down or gets underway or whatever I'm trying to say as it continues. <laughs> I'll be there in a minute. Hello. Hello, Earth. 74, Midland, Odessa. Going to be a great day today. So the western states are fabulous. The southern central plains are great and more wet weather in the northwest. Here's what's happening in your world this morning. It's half past the hour now and in the news headlines this morning, NASA technicians are working in a freezing Florida cold this morning preparing the Space Shuttle Challenger for liftoff again, about three hours away now. This flight, Challenger's 10th, includes the crew member, Krista McAuliffe, the first teacher to go into space, if she goes. Now, speaking of warming up, we hope temperatures will warm up for this, the launch of the Space Shuttle Challenger. They're getting ready uh, again to go off on about 10.38 Eastern time this morning is the scheduled launch time. They had uh, some trouble again with uh, one of the computer systems earlier uh, this morning. They had to sort of postpone the launch another hour or so or delay it about an hour. And then they were concerned about the cold temperatures. There had been some icy areas uh, reported uh, on some of the launch uh, site region. But other than that, things should be returning to near normal conditions, we think, by mid-morning. And thus, uh, the launch should go off without a hitch, at least from the weather angle. Freezing temperatures dogged NASA through the night as launch crews prepared the shuttle Challenger for a later this morning. 
Yesterday, a stubborn hatch cover, then worsening weather, scrubbed the lift off after several hours of waiting. No waiting for the Florida citrus grower, who also worked through this night, spraying crops against the cold and running the smudge pots. It's the third year running that a wedge of freezing air has threatened these Florida crops. Well, if a shuttle could shiver, the Challenger would, warmed only by the blusters of NASA left over from yesterday's comedy of the hatch cover. Tom Monteer is live in Atlanta. Tom, it's try harder again this morning? It's try hard and fight the elements. Right now, the seven members of the Challenger crew are on their way to the pad in the center of your picture. You can see the Astro van. There is no ice on the highways down there, but it is just 24 degrees at the launch pad, and that has definitely caused them some problems this morning. They predicted as early as Sunday it was going to be very cold today. If they were unable to lift off yesterday, they knew they had weather problems today. NASA says there is no exact amount of temperature that they have to scrub under. You see some of the ice uh, down in the uh, area underneath the launch pad. Uh, that's giving them fits right now because they have some air, some water suppression bags down in the bottom. And that's basically how they'll test to see whether they're able to go ahead or not. They'll go down and kick these bags. And uh, if they slush around, it's not frozen, so they will be able to continue. The computer problem that uh, caused them to move the fueling back by one hour uh, was uh, because of the uh, cold temperatures in the area. Here you see the crew just a few moments ago coming out of their crew quarters area for the second time in as many days. But NASA is fairly optimistic this morning. The weather is uh, not a factor except for the temperatures. They uh, have pretty much clear skies in the area as they are uh, now headed out to the launch pad. CNN meteorologist Dick Gregory is here now to uh, take a look at the exact weather uh, at the Kennedy Space Center. Nick? And Tom, we're going to look at the latest satellite picture to help us out to do this because we can see that skies are completely clear and the video coming from the Space Center also confirming that to us. Winds are light, so winds will not be a problem, although again, they're a bit on the strong side when you get into the upper atmosphere, but they're still within launch criteria. Still at 24 degrees, although again, with the launch time at about 10.38 Eastern time this morning, we hope that the thermometer will have warmed up to about the freezing mark by then, and also the sunshine will be beating down on the launch pad on the launch site area to help maybe sublimate, in other words, evaporate any of the ice that may be around, uh, let's say, the launch structure itself uh, in uh, that region. So we expect conditions to uh, be within limits, we think, for launch this morning. It's half past the hour, and in the news headlines this morning, with launch time just two hours away now, NASA's keeping a close eye on the weather at the Kennedy Space Center. The thermometer particularly, freezing temperatures a major concern. It was in the low 20s overnight, and NASA wants to make certain ice doesn't form on the Challenger's exterior. Icicles hang from the safety rails on the Space Shuttle Challenger's launch pad, but NASA says the icy weather is not likely to impede today's liftoff scheduled an hour and a half from now. That cold front's making work for NASA's officials a bit unpleasant as the Space Shuttle Challenger tries again about an hour and a half from now to leave the launch pad at the Kennedy Space Center. Today's launch was pushed back one hour because bulky equipment plagued workers before they tried to refuel the shuttle. The teacher, Krista McAuliffe, joins the six-member crew now on the Challenger's mission. She's to teach two lessons to be broadcast to schoolrooms on Earth while the crew will launch a communication satellite, also a space station, provided they get off the ground today. The Challenger crew is set to give it another try this morning. The shuttle is parked at the Kennedy Space Center with the first space teacher on board. Correspondent Tom Mentier is here to give us the very latest on the shuttle's ups and downs, and it's already been delayed again this morning. It was oh. supposed to go off at 10.38, and then 9.38, then and then 10.38. 11.08, and now who knows when. The countdown clock at the Kennedy Space Center is frozen at one hour and ten minutes and holding. They are taking a look at ice on the pad. Here you see a live picture from the Kennedy Space Center. This is what it looks like, and it's causing them some great concern. NASA officials now meeting to decide if this might prevent a launch, but as it stands right now, they are still go, but when? That's the big question. As I said, the uh, NASA officials are meeting uh, about this problem. The uh, ice evidently built up overnight and not really sure how much of an effect it will have on the countdown, whether they will continue to try to count down or actually scrub the launch again today. 
Krista McAuliffe is hoping that the ice will melt beneath her. She boarded the shuttle a while ago. She is sitting, waiting, as she did yesterday, for six hours. Hopefully this time they will be able to go. The launch director, Gene Thomas, told the crew a short time ago, welcome to our northern launch facility. Pad 39B sits about two miles from the uh, Space Center's usual pad, 39A. And uh, the children in New Concord, New Hampshire, are hoping that Krista McAuliffe goes this time. They watched yesterday and it didn't happen, but they are optimistic about today. Started waiting. Um, kind of, but I mean, I'll be real psyched when it goes up, though. I wish it'd go up. I want to see it. <laughs> They are not the only ones that want to see it. All of America is watching and waiting to see if the ice on the pad will ice the shuttle permanently to its structure. Once again, the live picture of the ice buildup. Uh, the countdown has been moved back several times today because of the weather. It is sub-freezing there now and causing uh, some great, great concern about the ice. If they do not go today, because they have already fueled the external tanks a second time, they fueled yesterday and again today, and if they are not able to get off today, it will be a 48-hour turnaround. So the earliest they could go if they do not have a liftoff is now set for Thursday, the exact time still to be determined. So once again, the countdown clock is frozen at the Kennedy Space Center, one hour and ten minutes, and the meeting is still going on by NASA officials trying to determine how much of a problem the ice is going to be. We, of course, keep you updated here on CNN of the progress, or lack of it, of Challenger. Cold weather has delayed the launch of the space shuttle Challenger. The main concern now is icicles. Technicians are going out to the launch pad to clear away any dangerous ice. NASA's afraid if icicles break off during liftoff, they could go crashing into Challenger. The latest word is that the next launch try will be at 11.38 Eastern, 8.38 a.m. Pacific time, and CNN will bring you live coverage of that. NASA now hopes to launch the Space Shuttle Challenger about an hour from now. CNN's Tom Mentier joins us now with an update. Will it fly today? Well, if they can get the ice scraped off the windshield of Challenger, there is an ice control team that is now on the way to the launch pad at the Kennedy Space Center. They're going to knock off the two-foot icicles that are on the pad. Hopefully, that will enable Challenger to break loose from its launch pad and get underway. Uh, they have moved the countdown several times today. Here's a look at what the ice looks like on the pad. Very unusual for the Kennedy Space Center with the temperatures below freezing, 24 degrees this morning when they went out to the pad. There was some concern that these icicles, if the Challenger did launch, would damage the heat tiles underneath it. So they decided to go out and knock them off before they attempt to resume the countdown. The countdown clock is running now. The shuttle sits on the pad waiting. They have been uh, inside for uh, a few hours this morning. Not quite what it was yesterday morning when they were in almost six hours sitting on their back waiting to go. But as it appears now, 11.38 will be the optimum time. Other than the ice, there are no serious weather problems. The winds are calm and the uh, skies are clear. So as it stands right now, 11.38 Eastern time will be the next scheduled launch time unless it's put off again. Molly? Okay, Tom. Wouldn't the, the, the blast off itself with the heat generated make those icicles melt? Well, the, underneath the shuttle is the area where most of the heat comes in, and they do have equipment there to disperse the heat and try to stop the fires. But uh, a lot of the vibration that would occur before it actually leaves the launch pad could take one of those icicles loose and possibly may turn it into a little missile. Well, all we can do is wish them best of luck at this point in time. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to warm up much. It's right now above freezing at the pad, so that will help, but it won't take off the icicles. I have to do that by hand. Okay, thanks. And who would have ever thought that icicles at the Kennedy Space Center would be the cause of a delay in the Challenger in terms of liftoff, but that's how wacky the weather's been this last week or so. With the latest on the uh, situation at the Kennedy Space Center, as well as around the rest of the country, here's CNN's meteorologist, Nick Gregory. Nick, is it warming up down there at all? It's up to 35 degrees now at the launch site uh, area, and the landing site area of the uh, shuttle, Patrick, and uh, we're looking for temperatures to climb into the 40s here this afternoon, but now that they're above freezing and there's a great amount of sunshine, uh, plus they have a team out there working on getting the ice uh, sickles off of 
uh, the surface structure of the shuttle. So hopefully things will go well for a launch within the next uh, two hours or so. Uh, this, this is the problem we first addressed yesterday because we did expect, again, this very cold air to push all the way in that area. And that was one of the concerns was that how cold would it be? Would it get to a serious freezing situation or not? around the shuttle. And we did think that this was going to happen as it fell to 24 degrees in the area there this morning. So that is certainly significant enough for a freeze. But it didn't last very long, which was good news also for the fruit growers, which made it through this deep freeze pretty well from what we understand, due to the fact that the freezing temperatures did not stay uh, for a prolonged period of time, let's say. They needed to be about four to six hours or more to cause devastating conditions. And it just was not in the mid-20s for that long of a period of time. So that's some good news there.